It's been a grueling journey. Lee's fought addiction. Spent many of hours in the, these flats, yeah. Well, smoking weed and all that type of, type of stuff. And a tragic loss has given him an inner strength. The both of us crying. Crying our eyes out. Terrible. Now he's on the verge of greatness. A chance to win a world title. I am going to knock Evgeny Gradovich out. There, how's that? We're looking forward to it, we're looking forward to it. Thank you. This will be the defining moment of Lee's entire life. Everything is on the line. This is it. And if he doesn't deliver, he may never get another world title shot. Lee is going to have to work harder than ever before, both inside the ring and out. We ain't going to get her. I feel like a drug dealer. But he hasn't got this far on his own. He's been guided <gasps> by his family. Of course he's going to win it. I know he's going to win it. It's his destiny, isn't it? Sorry, love, I got all the confidence in the world in you guys. Don't like seeing you get it. It's simple as that. He's been supported by his friends. We never had nothing, do you know what I mean? No one ever gave us nothing. And is the pride of his hometown. Good luck to Lee, next world champ, man. We're bringing it home. We're bringing it home. I'm going to try my best to bring the IBF Everweight World Championship back to Barry. With those closest to him fighting his corner, the boy from Barry now has the chance to have it all. To become world champion. <laughs> I always get scared before the fight. Not not scared of getting hurt or anything, just, just scared of losing. After all, all the hard work I put through, everything I've gone through leading up to the fight, like just just the fear of losing. There you go. Before Lee can challenge for a world title, he has to win one more fight. Lee, God forbid, if you go down. I'll take him to a neutral corner, I'll come back to you, I'll expect you up at eight, I'll ask you to walk towards me, I'll wipe your gloves, you'll box on. Good luck. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Have a good one. God bless you. Thank you. All right. Cheers. And he's up against his toughest opponent yet, an Australian boxer unbeaten in 28 fights, Joel Brunker. Australian, you know what I mean? I mean, look at where I'm, where is it? Tonight, the stakes are high. A win will propel Lee to the biggest stage in boxing. Dear Lord, I ask you to send down a spirit of skill, courage, and determination that we've not seen in Lee before. I ask you to keep both boxers safe. Amen. From Barry, Lightning Lee Shelby! When I come out to the ring, it, it looks like, like I'm an arrogant prick, to be honest. But like that, that, that's not me. It's only, it's only a, when I'm fighting them like that. In everyday life, I'm quiet, shy, keeps myself to myself. And as I walk out, I think, right, this first punch is going to land on me. He's going to knock me out. And then they throw the first punch. He usually misses by miles, or if it lands, it, it, don't, it has no effect. And then I know I switch back and I'm on, I'm on the fight. But he's getting banged around this ring now. I was breaking him down round by round. The straight shots in the body just, just drained the energy out of me. He come back off the ropes and I, I tapped him to the head with the left hook and then followed up with the left hook to the body and that's what done him. He wins and that was his little chink in the arm he, he showed me. I caught him with a lovely shot to the body and that, that was it. He's done. He sat down onto the bottom rope and the referee come and stop the contest. We said we needed a bit of razzle-dazzle and that man is going on to a world title shot next. Yes. I'm happy, you know. Let me see your medical. Out of the way, How are you feeling? Fine. Okay. Vision all right? Yeah. Straight in. It's okay. So like, come on. Yeah. And again. Check out. Right. Good work, eh? Yeah. Proper. 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 I feel I was great, bro. I'm not going to be satisfied until I get that, that war title. I'm never yeah, proud of him. When we were little kids, yeah, we were proud then. It's not a sense of pride, it's a sense of achievement. And if he didn't achieve what I knew he'd achieved, then I'd be disappointed. I'd be proud when he's a multi-world champion. And I could go, you've done it. 
Oh, I knew he'd win. He always wins. So, very proud. He deserves it. He trains really, really hard. Really hard. Lee is now a contender. The next eight months would be the biggest of his life. And he's allowed a film crew to follow him behind the scenes. Everything Lee's dreamt of, everything his friends and family have pushed him towards, is now riding on his next fight. Barry, on the coast of South Wales. At one time, this town was home to the busiest coal port in the world. Industry brought people, money, and good times. But Barry's glory days have faded. You watch yourselves, all right? Right. Okay? <laughs> watch your wheel trims there. All right? The car will be up on blocks down shortly. <laughs> I'm turning your back. I'm not laughing. I'm not joking. <laughs> Yeah. Nice All right, nice one. I, I don't see this area as, as a rough area because, because it's like a home to me where, where I was brought up and this is where my family live. It keeps me grounded. No matter how far in life or how well I do in boxing, I'll always stay true to where I come from. I'll always be coming back here. Most of the, the great fighters have come from like deprived backgrounds. They have to fight their way out of the, the poverty and. Boxing is a sport where a poor man can become like a, a superstar, a famous man with a lot of money. Lee began fighting at the age of eight. Can I choose a gym, yeah? Training close to home in gyms above the local pubs. Lee's dad thrust him into the boxing ring 20 years ago and he still pushes his son hard every day. People might think I'm cruel, but you know, if you want to be the best, you've got to train as the best. We can rip up our six in the morning, look boy, you've got to run to school. Oh, come on, I don't care, you're running. You run to school, Didn't come, never complained. Pick him up then from school, you're running home. And he'd run home, go to the gym, I'd run to the gym with him. This is a kid, I suppose, didn't have a proper life as a kid. It was always boxing, boxing, boxing. I could see seven, which other people couldn't see. This kid had talent. Why be like the rest of these kids? All these young kids that they, they are, you know, it's such waste. There's nothing in life, no achievements. They turn to drugs, really. Alcohol, and end up in prison. It was a good escape for Lee. Boxing for the world title. Jesus Christ, of course he's going to win it. It's his destiny, isn't it? He's like a prophet. It's his destiny, man. That man talks sense. I'm talking sense, man. For decades, boxing has been part of this community and many like it, turning kids off the street into champions. And with a world title in his sights, Barry will still be the base for Lee's training. I was born in Barry, so I was about 16, 17, got myself in a little bit of trouble. Went to prison, got out of prison. Went to live in London, stayed up in London most of the time. Come to Bally one day, met a woman, stayed in Bally. My mother? Yes, his mother. My Bally's OK. Got a bit downhill. You go to the town of Bally, everybody seems to be on drugs these days, don't they? When I was a kid, there's no drugs about. Might get the odd Caribbean woody like, innit? Caribbean woody? Caribbean woody, man. As a teenager with little else to do, Lee found himself drawn to alcohol and drugs. <laughs> Spent many of hours in the, these flats, yeah. Well, smoking weed and all that type of, type of stuff. I, I'd say I was addicted to drugs and, and drink. Looking back, I did really waste some years doing all that, but that part of my life's done. I know in, in the future I, I won't I won't resort to like drinking and drugs. I, I've already done that. I know where I sit, and 
It's not for me no more. This is the governor from the area. Lee may have put his troubles behind him, but not the friends he shared them with. Is there any Christmas present or? Is that for me, is it? Oh, thank you, darling. No problem, babe. You was always getting me presents. Nice guy, see? Yeah, I'll give me this one as well. That's what I'm talking about. Sure? Yeah. Let's have it. Yeah, that's so, what we do. <laughs> yeah. Yo, let's have a look then. That's not a lot. Ooh. That's naughty, eh? Yeah. Thank you, bro. I'm wearing watch. No problem. Lee and Jake have been friends since they were 14. Uh -huh. He's like we was born together. We might have had half, see? We'd never had nothing, do you know what I mean? No one ever gave us anything. It was hard work, bro. We'd get a pound and two yeah. pounds and, do you know what I mean? Scripting the scraping every day. And then when you, all oh, you got to come out is this. This is what we used to do every yeah. day, we used to come out to this. And we'd be chilling all up in the flats, all brown gear, car music on there, big spliffs, <laughs> girls poker. Yeah, you know what I mean? A couple of girls hanging around. Yeah. Just playing like it was James Bond. Yeah. <laughs> Serious, bro. One thing sticks in my mind, like, do you know what I mean? We was by here in the car, it was about two in the morning, three in the morning, and that punto, and the wheel fell off. Oh, yeah. We used to do it all the time. We'd go down Path Caddy, and then we'd be shadow boxing in the night, having little spars yeah, and all stuff. Yeah, we used to do that, didn't we? Yeah. We'd, we'd drive up, we'd park, we'd like park up in like a car park. We get out and we just fight for, for like hours, and we just like mm, in the night, like, just messing about boxing and yeah. stuff. It was all like a dream, basically, winning a world title and all this stuff, like yeah. To be honest, I've never seen nothing like it before in my life. Do you know what I mean? It's the first time someone close to me has done anything. Do you know what I mean? So, thank you very much. The other day, bro. It's all we got, bro, is friendship, like, do you know what I mean? Nothing else, like, that's it, bro, that's all we got, do you know what I mean? That's all, that's all anyone got, bro. There was another member of the gang, Lee's older brother, Michael. He was away working, he had an argument with his friend, and, like, like they had a lot of scuffle, had a lot of fight, they'd been drinking. They went their separate ways. He walked in the opposite way, s slipped and fell in a little ravine. It was only like three foot deep. When he was drunk, he must have just fell over and it was freezing cold December time. And he, he drowned. It's still a f fresh memory, like it seems like yesterday. I can remember my mother phoned us up. I can remember crying all the way back up, up to my auntie's house to, to see my um, sister, the both of us crying, crying our eyes out. And after that, then I was just out on a drinking binge for about a month, just trying to block it out, get into some terrible states. And then once I, once I sobered up off there, that's when I knock her down on the box, I suppose. But, um, that's probably the most I've talked about. I find it there. And looking back, that, that was the turning point where I cut myself away from like all the bad I was doing. Since then, just dedicating my life to it. It's, and with the boxing, it's come from strength to strength. I feel like he'd be so proud of us now, what we're doing. Be proud. Lee now has someone else to fight for. This is my daughter, Lucy Lee Selby. She's four months old. She is beautiful. I'm not too keen on changing nappies, though. When she was born, I, w I was in full-time training, so I didn't get much time to bond with her. But now, since my last fight, I've had plenty of time. Lee would love a boy, though, wouldn't you, Lee? As well. Mm. I was hoping for a boy, but now no, she's here. I'm more than happy with a girl. Definitely no boxing, though, for her. No. She's too pretty, isn't she? It's, it's made the difference having a family because I, I, I got more, more to fight for. I'm not just fighting for myself or for my dad. Now I'm fighting to provide for my own family. <laughs> we were childhood sweethearts. The first year of the comprehensive school, she was in the Barry Girls School, I was in the Barry Boys School, and we used to like, meet up halfway. The schools are, are like a, a mile 
between each other a mile and a half. We'd meet up like on break time and, and stuff. Hold hands. And hold hands. She'd try and kiss me, but I never would. <laughs> I never would. <laughs> Lee was really shy though. It's two months since Lee secured his world title shot. Now he's stepping up his training regime. So he's come to Newport for the first real test of the campaign. Boxing is a poor man's sport. I do believe that, it's a poor man's sport. Lee had nothing as a kid. None of these boys had anything as kids. They were born with, you know, very, come from poor, maybe working class backgrounds. The upper class people, they don't need to go to gyms. They've probably got their own private gyms, haven't they? And it's the rich people are paid to come see the people fight and beat each other up. It's weird, isn't it? But how else these kids are going to get money? They're not the brightest of sparks. But you've got to be a bit daft to come in and do it, haven't you, really? To prepare for his biggest fight yet, Lee will train with bigger, stronger opponents. Today he's sparring, simulating a fight, and he's taking on a boxer who is three stone heavier. There's major risks in sparring, like picking up injuries, you could get cut. That's where most damage is done in sparring. Like, you're not going to get injured running, really. We, we know how, how hard to push each other. You know, it's just the same as playing a game of football when you miss. No different. Except we're getting a punch in the head. I want to win in a fight, I'm only fighting a nine stone man. Today I'm fighting a fucking 15 stone man. No, not 15 stone. 12 and a half. Don't just slip. And again, go again. And again. Push. Push that jab and go back again. Lee's a featherweight, weighing in at nine stone. He's fast. Back to, back to the edge. Touch the body. But if his heavier, middleweight opponent lands a shot, it could do serious damage. Push! Push! Tap, tap again. Got caught a left up right hand then, son. Push! 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 Sparring can be just as brutal as a real fight. Push! Push! Fighting someone so much heavier, if he catches you, you know you're in trouble, you're going to get hurt. But at the same time, it benefits me when I get in the ring with a featherweight, someone, someone my own size. It's like fighting, fighting a little boy. Yeah, yeah. 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 Y
Although his training is now intensifying, he still wants to be close to family and friends. <laughs> Strengthening that bond. When he hits you, if I break through you for the next fucking three months, bro. Sorry. Have a breather, I'm saying. You just bust, bust the life out of me. If I'd not, I would have been bust, busting the life out of me. Granny Fitch, I feel sorry for you, bro. Lee will be fighting current featherweight champion Yevgeny Gradovich, a Russian fighter who's never been beaten. Gradovich, ah! keep coming, he's going to bag these one twos in. Ah! I mean, one two, ah! it. four. Ah! What do you got, still body? Jab, ah! double it. Ah! Hit you in the face like that with jabs all the time. And this small coming in like that, you've got to get this hard and bang it. Ah! Okay. Lee Sr. has trained with his son for the past 20 years. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Be here at past seven or you're sacked. But there's only so much he can do. Oh. Lee needs the help of expert trainers. He's on his way to Bristol. The final preparations for Lee's world title fight will be run by manager Chris Saniga. Good to see you, all right? This is the yeah, new place. Let, let me give you a little tour around. Chris was a successful boxer, but excelled more as a coach, leading a number of fighters to world titles. Oi! You keep off him. No messing about, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Boxing for a world title. <laughs> hey? I abused my career, really. Uh, I was a, a big drinker. I'm a big party goer and, I, and uh, I'm mixed in the wrong circles and uh, sort of lost my way a bit. Just relax. As a schoolboy, I was a problem child and there was three of us always in trouble and they would chat at the names. And I won't say their names because they were <laughs> a problem get a lawsuit. But they'd say they're one name, two name, and then they'd say Sanigar. And, and the other two boys, one is wound up um, sort of in a mental institution and the other one's done, done life imprisonment. And uh, <laughs> now there's me. So the boxing definitely saved me. Chris turned his life around and hopes that by sharing his experiences with young boxers like Lee, they will go on to achieve what he never could. Right, slow down. <laughs> Lee Selby has that focus and dedication. He is just a, a fanatic. Don't try so hard. Don't try so hard. <laughs> With most fighters, you're trying to up their pace, up their pace. With yourself, you're trying, we're trying to ease them down. <laughs> just calm down, just calm. No, you're not. You need to calm down. Hey? You need to calm down, don't you? <laughs> With two and a half months to go, Chris has lined up the biggest test yet for Lee. He's going to spar with some of the world's best fighters. Traveling with Lee is Tamuka Mucha, another of Chris's protégés. The boy from Barry Town is heading for Los Angeles. This will be the toughest week of Lee's training. But while the jet lag wears off, he has time to enjoy the sights. Bruce Lee, man. He's another one of my idols.
fewer fans. He's selling dope. That's my dad. Just drive him around selling weed. Tomorrow, it's back to work. And over at the Viva Canteen on Sunday, you can see the gears. Pearl Harbor and a bunch of other bands. It's amazing. The team are heading to the Wild Card, one of the most infamous boxing gyms in the world. And we spar with anyone. That's the, the excitement and uh, the terror of it. <laughs> You get a bit nervous, man. Because like you're out of your comfort zone, you're in so you're in someone else's gym. You don't know who you're aspiring. You've never seen the guy before. He could be brilliant. Hopefully, we leave the gym with my nose in the same shape as in her. Anything can happen. Hey. As they approach the gym, something's up. The wild card is home to boxing superstar Filipino welterweight Manny Pacquiao. Amid a wave of media attention surrounding the biggest fight in history with Floyd Mayweather, the gym is on lockdown, with no cameras allowed inside. Not today. Uh, your crew won't be allowed in today. We understand that you guys have a job to do, but we need to uh, we need to do our job as well, and hopefully uh, everybody understands, and uh, that's what we're going to do. With the camera crew stuck in the car park, Lee heads inside. Boxers come from all over the world to spar here, and Lee will be up against an unknown opponent. He was an Armenian boy, world amateur champion. We only got to spar one round, and towards the end of the, end of the round, he caught me with, well, this one went in, up, up into my eye. They swelled up, as you can see, swelled up straight away. So, I think he could have messed up my trip. With just 10 weeks to go before the fight, if the injury is serious, the whole thing could be called off. A thumb? Like a thumb, yeah. Okay. Tell me about your vision. My vision's okay. Good. Yeah. So there's no scratches mm. on the cornea or the mm. surface of the eye. So then the only thing that really needs to be done, I'm going to test to see if we have anything that's fractured, which I doubt. And I'm going to use a tuning fork because a tuning fork, when you place it on a bone, makes the bone vibrate. Yeah. So if there's a fracture and the bone vibrates, what's that going to feel like? It's not going to feel very nice No, at not at all. <laughs> no. Not at all. Go. Any increased pain? Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. There's no there's no potential of there being any kind of fracture. Okay. If you had a fractured orbit, then we say, okay, you know, you're out for six weeks. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay? There you go. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Lee may be sidelined from sparring, but Chris is taking him to another gym to work on his technique. That's good. Let me see your jab, catch his jab, come back with a double jab. Don't get too close. The other guy's going to throw a right hand, but instead they're going to go underneath the right, right hand and then come back with a left hook. Do you know what I mean? So you go boom, boom, boom. Yeah, that's it. Out he goes. How he goes, yeah, okay. yeah. You know, but like, like I say, if you can do that picture perfect, then they should go. Yes, that, that one shot bump can change the whole fight, you know? Get, you get caught with a good shot, could take you two or three rounds to get over it. That jab has got to be like lightning. Because that, all that is is just to make me Lightning. blink. You know what I mean? Then as I blinked, now you're there. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right, hey. How would you like this one for Gradovich? <laughs> That's what I don't want. That's what I don't want. To perform.
perfect his punches, Lee repeats every movement hundreds of times, so he can deliver each blow with power and accuracy. Chris hopes that if Lee's eye improves, he'll be able to spar. And the gym's head coach has someone special lined up. And Oscar Valdez, if you yes. can give us four rounds, that'd be great. Yes. But he'd be good, great work for you. I'm lined up to spar Oscar Valdez. He's a very good up and coming featherweight fighter from the US. Keep me in good stead, good preparation for the fight. Lee isn't taking any chances. Before he steps into the ring again, he'll need something to protect his injured eye. Yes, yes, my name is Kazumichi. Kazumichi don't like telephone. Never, never have a telephone in my life. I promise you, all my life. Uh, can I come to the shop and buy gloves? You can come to my store, but you gotta tell me your first name first. Otherwise, I don't like you. Kazmichi Hayashi sells boxing gear to the latest generation of wannabe world champions. Bye bye. I'm not happy. I'm angry no. every day. Too much is no good. Mm. Too much, too much sex, too much masturbation, too much <laughs> drink, too much, you know, eat, too much, too much is no good. That's good advice. But Lee has only really yeah. come for a new head guard. White color? Yeah. Yes. Try, try this one. Yes. Hopefully I'll protect my eye. See, you got the bar here. You know, the, the glove can't get through and catch me in the eye. No, that's good. Who's going to pay? Chris? Yeah. Manager? It's 500. 500. Thank you very much for coming today and then listening to my angry story. After a week of disappointment, Lee is finally getting the chance to fight. He's taking on Mexican fighter Oscar Valdez. A former Olympian, Valdez has never lost in his professional career, knocking out all but one of his opponents. And his fighting style is similar to Gradovich's. Don't get into exchanges. No, no, no. Just keep it long. Keep it long. Right, then, so it's some magic. Right. You do it. Lee starts by hitting Valdez with some good combinations. And dodges the quick shots. Okay, you've got to step to your right. You mustn't uh, just walk, go back in a straight line, right? Step to your right. I throw the right hand before you throw the left hook. All right? Valdez comes at Lee with sharp, successive shots to his face. Both boxers are holding their own. He was in a good position and then you walked into a bad position. Side on, side on. As the session continues, Valdez forces Lee onto the ropes. Lee fights back, but Valdez uses his speed and power to remain on top. Good sparring. There was a, you know, a lot of things that Lee Selby uh, wasn't doing uh, correctly, and that, you know, we can work on that. Uh, and a guy, you know, is very good, and that's what we're here for, you know? Any, anyone can uh, 
uh, two of the guys from where. Yeah. One of them's going to drive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Alright, see you up here. Nice one. Yeah. It's all about generating Welsh support for the big fight. Better close these up. Don't count on the money, huh? don't trust no one. Then you're getting burgled. Yeah, this is just a week's worth of ticket sales. There's thousands here. There's still six weeks left to go to the fight there, so... I feel honoured and privileged that people are spending their hard doing cash to come and watch me fight. Because money's hard to come by, and then... Some of the people, some of my mates, they haven't got no money, they haven't got no jobs, so they're just claiming benefits and they save up their money a little bit a week. And they hand it over to me to come, come up and watch me fight. A privilege. A couple of fifties, eh? There's bound to be a few dodgy notes in here. Smells a wee this. No for that. Yeah, yeah. Of course, there's always temptation in trying to, trying to earn money the wrong way. It's, it's, it's easy, it's fast. I've tried it, don't get me wrong. But, um, like, take, say for instance, I met a good friend of mine. We both turned professional at the same time. He ended up doing 10 years in jail. And now I'm fighting for a world title. He got caught sell, selling drugs. And now he's locked up. Go on, let's get to the bank. Bank it. For his big fight, Lee's going back to London. Back to the O2. And the event is about to be officially announced. Some of the look, man, visualising the fight. All these thousands of fans screaming. It's huge, yeah. Massive. I can remember boxing as an amateur in these, these little pubs up in the valleys. Like fighting my heart out at like 10 years of age, you know. I've gone from there to fighting at the O2 Arena in London. One of the biggest venues in the country. Leading the proceedings is Lee's promoter, Eddie Hearn. Welcome to the O2 Arena, where we announce our huge show, May the 30th, on this wonderful arena, where many of these gentlemen will be gracing the ring in a huge night of British boxing. Lee Selby challenges the tough Russian and IBF world champion Yevgeny Gradovich for the IBF featherweight title. Lee, you won a final eliminator here and are ready to get the big one. Looking down at that belt there is just giving me goosebumps. Um, I, know, I know I'm up against it. Gradovic is a, a great champion. I'm, I'm going to knock him out. I, I, never, I, mean, I never make a prediction, so now, now I've got to back well, myself up. Said, That's it. This is the official prediction. I am going to knock Evgeny Gradovic out. <laughs> there, that was there. This is it. And if he doesn't deliver, he may never get another world title shot. Or he may, only, he may get one in six months, he may get one in three or four years. But it's so difficult to get. This is it. This is his moment. And if he doesn't grab it with both hands, he will regret it for the rest of his life. But that's the pressure of boxing, and that's elite level boxing. Two of the best featherweights in the world, Lee Selby and Yevgeny Gradovich. It's, anything can happen. You know, it's a 50 50 fight. Uh, I just believe this is Lee Selby's time. One person isn't looking forward to the big fight. Sorry, love, i got all the confidence in the world in you, but I just don't like seeing you get it, as simple as that. I don't really get it much. It's a lot of pressure. No one likes seeing their kids fighting, do they? My job's to protect them, not watch them get it. But this one, yeah, I'm very, very nervous, because this one I know is his dream. And if he's... <laughs> well, if he don't get it, he's going to be so upset. That's going to be me upset, that's it. If he's sad, I'm sad. If my kids are sad, I'm sad. If they're happy, I'm happy. Simple. Um, I'd rather die than really lose. I'd rather die God. Than... <laughs> I just see it like... Put it, like, if, if he was in here now, if he was in this room and they got the pot of money there and the belt, there's no way he'd leave a door before me. I'd kill, I'd kill him. <laughs> he wouldn't kill me. I'm, I'm willing to die for it. If the money was here and the belt was here, I'd leave the door before he would. That's for sure. In the final run-up to the fight, Lee is still running every day around Barry, and his dad is never far behind. Get it, Emma. It's like riding a bike. 
But now it's getting harder to run the streets without getting stopped. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Running, old man. On a bike. Oh, come on. Yeah, sir. Do you get in the whip off, do you? Whip man. Whip. <laughs> yeah, man. Whip Can you please do your dad? What's that? Love this community. What's that? Try to make him have a bit of a chill, like that. Oh, yeah. You're got, trying to. Nine times out of ten, he's got a face like a smashed yeah. ass. He's got a <laughs> bad hemorrhoids. Do you know what I mean? Hey, don't talk about hemorrhoids. I'll be sat on after the last half hour. With days to go before the biggest fight of his life. Lee's doing a public workout in Barry Town Centre. And the people have come out to cheer on their wannabe champ. Absolute inspiration. It's the people's champ. Good luck to Lee, next world champion. Gonna bring it back for us, isn't he? Yeah? Yeah. My, my plan is to keep making him miss and try and break his hat, because he's a tough man. I can hit him as much as I, as much as I want, and he'll take the shots as long as he can hit me back. If I can make him miss, that's why I win the fight. Boom, boom. He said, oh, a tough man that just breaks their hat. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Then later on, once he starts backing up, he'll be out of his comfort zone, because he's a pressure fighter. Just wants to come forward. I get him to the back of the ropes. Boom, 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 boom. Then he starts landing the bigger shots. Boom, 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 boom. And hopefully it'll all be over. We'll have a new champion. I talk a good fight, don't I? It's, it's great to have, to have the support of the town following me. It'd be great for Buddy Town, especially for like the youngsters that they were, they were in a similar position to me. I, I didn't really have no one to look up to and to inspire to be. So if I can give that, that back to the town and the community, it would mean a war to me. I wouldn't be in this, this position now fighting for a world championship if, if it weren't for like my family, my parents, and like and like the support the support of the town, the support of Bayou Town. All of them together have, have helped me become aware. Yeah. Yeah. I feel if I had it, all they want to do is see kids succeed in life. As long as they, you know, you, I, I wasn't perfect as a kid. Far from it, I was always in prison. I mean, 70, 80, 90, I was a terror. Nick, you know, not Nick. Didn't give a shit, like. Smoking drugs, drinking, fighting, burgling, robbing, pillaging. I fight in the street then, like idiots. We're all about drunk on the floor, smashing each other's brains in. I was a terror. But as you get older, I packed all that in, 25, 30, you know. I mean? You have kids, you settle down, don't you? Kids then, you've got to drum into your kids. Don't be an idiot in life. Succeed in life. There's chances out there, if you've got a chance, go and get it, grab it. I know he's very, very focused, he knows what he wants out of life. And he's got the ability to go and get it. Big opportunities for a minute. It's great when they're winning, it's not so good when they're losing. They haven't had that yet. It'll come, isn't it? Everyone loses. Are you you know, believe in yourself on your way up, because you've got to believe in yourself when you're on the way down too. Good philosophy, that, eh? After months of build-up, Lee finally has the chance to see his opponent in the flesh. I'm starting to get a bit nervous as well, thinking about the fight. See, seeing a battle up there is making a fight become more of a reality, you know? So much at stake. And welcome to the official final press conference leading up to what will be a great night of world-class professional boxing at London. It's going to be a tense final few days. Lee's got his team for support, but not his family and friends. Watching all these big fights on TV, it's like it's all hyped up. You never think that it's going to become a reality to you, do you? 
Do you know what I mean? Like, you know what I'm saying, do you? To everyone else, he's a superstar. People like, you know, the autographs, or Lisa Albee. But to us, he's a, he's a monkey. He, he don't change his underpants. Do you know what I mean? And he beats his friends up. Hey. I mean, this is real serious shit. He's gonna go on edge, he's gonna hurt him. He's gonna come out, put the title, get paid. Boom, exactly. I ain't going nowhere, I'll be there all the way, bro. Do you know what I mean? And... OK, OK, OK. For the fight, Lee needs to get his weight down to nine stone, the limit for a featherweight fighter. Whilst training, he's been on a strict diet for weeks. Yeah. Before he can weigh in, he needs to prove that he's fit to fight. Antibiotics, no flu, no asthma, feel good. To make the weight, Lee has pushed his body to the limit. Tense and hungry, Lee begins to close down, shutting out those around him focusing everything on the fight. Okay. European British WBC international featherweight champion, Lightning Lee Selby! Eight stone, 13 pounds, three ounces for the challenger, nine stone for the Russian-Mexican, Evgeny Gradovich! I don't really feel no emotion towards him. He, he haven't done nothing wrong to me. He's just trying to, trying to keep hold of his title, and I'm trying to take it away from him. Today's the big day. Saturday, fight night. O2 Arena, London. Boys on, fighting for the championship of the world, featherweight. Great for Lee, great for Barry. It was a big thing, I suppose. Well, it was a really big thing. Life changing. If he wins, like, yeah. could break the strongest of men before they got to fight. All sorts of force and emotions go through you. I think about my brother and that like, he's not here. He'd have been on the bus, riding up front, him and Jake. Brilliant things are coming. Yeah. Bang! The Lord is my shepherd, for I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Even though I am to the valley of the shadow of death, I will have no fear. Dear Lord, I ask you to keep both boxers safe. Amen. Amen. Go on, Lee. Push. Say boxing is the, the loneliest sport in the world. You got your team, but well, once you're in the ring, you're on your own. It's only you taking the punches, and it's only, only you giving them. So it's probably the, the loneliest sport. Forget about the lights, the the, the, the cameras, everything. Just him and Gradfitch in the ring. 
Serious stuff. Serious stuff. Shy as could ever know. Very, very painfully shy. And he knows what it's like to struggle. Have to struggle from the bottom up to get into the top and look at him now. A professional boxer, they are very special people, and only sort of one in a million could walk up those steps and fight. I mean, it's just the excitement, the fear. I can see Semi, which other people can see. Just get our talent. Get at it. Who's at it? Give them, I suppose. Bless. Seventh round, we, we had a clash of heads. It was on the, on the side of his head, the cut. You just got to try and make it as bad as possible. Try and open it up and try and, try and make the blood run into the eyes and anything. It sounds a bit brutal, but that's, that's the sport we're in. It's a fight. You've got to do anything, anything you can to win. It was the eighth round. We clashed heads again and it, it cut above his forehead. Well, above his eye on his forehead. It was quite a bad cut. Called the doctor over. Checked the cuts. The doctor said he wasn't fit to continue, so they, they stopped the fight. And no, I be Champion of the world, Lightning Elite. Sell away. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. King of the world, IBF heavyweight champion. It means the world to me. It's not. It's not about. It's just the whole thing. The belt means nothing to me. This is going to go to my dad's cabinet. But um, just the title of being world champion. Right? So I've been working towards since I, well, for as long as I can remember. And now I'm just so happy. I'm going to take the belt back to the town. The town's going to be happy, the country's happy, man. Everybody's happy, except Gredovich. I'm so happy for him. Yeah. Yeah. No. It was never in Zouj. Made it now, ain't All turn our backs. All turn our backs. <laughs> Got a beautiful missus, beautiful kid. What more can he want? He's won his world title. Got a lovely family. That's the end of it, like you know. And this is like an example to all the, the youngsters against all the odds. You know, you can become world champion. And and Lee Salvi can be, become a megastar. I've worked my way up the high. Really, if, if I can do whatever people can. I have to in my left hand. I bloody... I was right to carry around before. Now I'm, now I'm just a family man and a world champion. It was amazing. Eight years old, he wanted that. I was just really proud. Nothing else you can say, really, is it? He's done it. I've won it for myself, my father, my family, and, and my, my brother has passed away. I dedicated the fight to him in the ring. So I know he's watching now with a big smile on his face. It is, man. This is the beginning of a, of a great journey for me. Keep defending my title, make as much money as I can. I want, I want to be like a, a superstar in this world. I, I think I can be. I'm going back as the champion of the world. Oh, I can't believe this. Hey, you done it, my friend. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. Honoured.